<laughs> Today I on the Music on. Reel, hi everyone, it's Nicola Burton, I'm your host and I've got two very special guests with me today. I've got Graham Buzz Bidstrup and I've got Dr. Mark Bin Barker. Now these are two gentlemen who are very active in Indigenous communities around Australia and in particular they use music as their pathway to talk about health and education um, and, and everything to do with bringing people together and connecting through music. And as the music reel is talking to people around the world about the effects of the lockdown, I thought it would be a great time to have a conversation with these two guys and see how everything's going with them in lockdown and also talk about what's going on out in the community. So Mark and Buzz, welcome. Hi, Nikki. Yep. It's good to see How's you How's everybody? Guys. Yep, Buzz is looking good. Uh, look, looking I'm... I'm 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 in Arnhem Land. My backdrop is is in Boaca in Arnhem Land. <laughs> I'm actually in Sydney, um, but uh, yeah, Mark, you, you're in Broome, yeah. I'm in stuck in Broome, yep. Stuck and in you're Brisbane, on air, stuck but, in Sydney, but... stuck in Broome. Okay. <laughs> so okay, let's start with um, Mark. So at the moment, so those of you who don't know, so Mark is in a multi award winning. TV and radio producer, he's a musician, he's an artist manager, he's got a label, he's a comedian, he's a speaker, he pretty much does everything. And his phenomenal show, Mary G, the Queen of the Kimberley, um, has just, I, I think that was one thing that, I, that struck me when I met you in What Air, just that the, the engagement, the warmth of Mary G as a character. And now Mary G is working with the Western Australian government with you producing videos for the COVID. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, well, first of all, I just want to say that all those accolades you just uh, announced on me, I take tablets to manage it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I haven't got COVID, but thank God. But um, look, um, sorry, a, a question again? Well, you know, just to talk about what you and Mary G are doing in those videos and talk about, you know, the reasoning behind them yep. and how they're actually getting out in the community. Yeah, well, well, courtesy of COVID, um, I've been inundated with um, uh, doing animation um, or the voice for animation. Anyway, I didn't physically do it. Um, and, of course, those other videos, um, other Mary G or Mark Ben Barker, um, and doing radio. So despite the isolation, everybody is, in particularly Western Australia, is, is listening to Mary G. So Carnarvon, Geraldton, Perth, it's all going live, right through the Kimberley, right through the Pilbara. And uh, that's what's kept me connected to our listeners. And of course, we're playing our countrymen's music. So um, everybody is tuned in. They want to hear their songs. They want to hear... Um, the wit of Mary G, um, and also being informed. And, and COVID-19 has given us the opportunity to not only provide important messages that is, is about people's safety, but stay connected through that message because everyone's all ears. Um, but Kimberley had about 19 cases of um, COVID-19 infections and none of them were Aboriginal. Um, so Aboriginal people head for the hills. <laughs> Yeah. So they did take it seriously, you know, and, and that's a courtesy of the Kimberley Aboriginal Medical Services Council as well, um, because they were the first ones to lead the charge to um, introduce closing um, boundaries or um, borders, you know, and um, the Kimberley was one of the first ones to did it, and the rest of the states all followed them. So um, I think, uh, yeah, and it wasn't for that. Um, I think it could have been much more serious. Mind you... I haven't heard of much Aboriginal people across the country so um, who's been, you know, uh, uh, affected by COVID-19. So Mary G goes live into Cairns, <coughs> into uh, Townsville, and also streamed on the internet. So uh, every radio station has a streaming element so people can access it um, if they don't have access to a radio station. So all of that has kind of allowed me to just continue as normal. The only difference is I haven't been able to perform um, as Mary G, um, but that's good as performing, isn't it? It is, it is. Now, Buzz, now, Buzz, yes. a very familiar face in our industry. So you have been 
uh, obviously producer, writer, speaker, um, musician for a very, very long time. Um, so what, four decades now? Um, and you, oh, yeah, about that. And you're, juggler. I'm, a, I'm a juggler. You're a juggler. So you're the CEO of the Uncle Jimmy Thumbs Up organisation um, and yeah. you're using music as a pathway um, to help the Indigenous communities. You were supposed to be out there when the virus yeah, was about to go out there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I should be there right now and I, I would have been there a bit earlier. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of, of organising a program in partnership with two store groups, which is ALPA and uh, Arnhem Land Progress Association and, and Outback Stores for new signage to go into all of the stores. So um, our signage has been there for 10 years so far. The Uncle Jimmy, you know, thumbs up, good tucker, long life. It's been there for about 10 years. And now um, we're getting a whole suite of, of new signage and, and some signage about, uh, you know, having too much sugar, you know, and, and adding vegetables to to other other dishes and recipes and things. So it's a whole thing which is would have been happening right now, except it all got closed up. So uh, now it will happen a bit later on this year and into next year. Um, but it's great to know that the communities actually will be opened up again very soon. Um, I heard about June 18, I think. Oh, that's They're going to be opened up again in the Northern Territory anyway. And, and the people that I'm working with will be able to get out into the communities and start, um, and start you know, doing this promotional work. And it's all to do with our Good Tucker app, which um, I know I've spoken about before on your, on your show. So um, I need to find a little, a little um, screenshot or something so I can say this is what the Good Tucker app does. But it, it, for anyone who's listening, it's, it's very simple. It's just... It's, uh, it's goodtucker.com, it's, it's thumbsup.org.au and you'll find the Good Tucker app and it's free and it helps you find, you know, healthier food. So that's what we're up to. That's what I'll be up to as soon as I can get back up there again. Great. Well, look, this question is for both of you. So, okay, so communities are going to start opening up. Um, what do you think is going to change moving forward in terms of um, communities being able to get together, celebrate and you know, have music, which is such an important part of the community connection. What do you think will be different? And either of you jump in. Well, um, I was going to say that uh, coronavirus has been a bit of a godsend in my belief, because what it did was it told the world, slow down, you're moving too fast. And, uh, and it suits Aboriginal people perfectly, because Aboriginal people, are, um, they're not uh, fast moving people and they think and they understand and they comprehend and try and work out a way forward all the time. So um, I think it's been such a, a handy thing for, for us um, Aboriginal people. And I think uh, also it's taught people that um, home is such a beautiful place. Um, staying home is a beautiful place. Unfortunately, some places have had a... Um, uh, what do you call it, drinking has been pretty dominant, um, drinking alcohol. Um, people are twiddling their thumbs, bored, so they drink grog, you know, and, of course, yeah. you know what comes after that. Yeah. Um, but, but most people have been um, uh, respectful of the fact that this thing is serious, and I think people are just waiting for the lift, but they're not in a hurry for it. Um, I think the, the government talks about second wave and the third wave that we've got to be prepared for. Right. Um, mm. You know, we, we just had this recent round of um, contaminations from this goddamn sheep ship in Perth. So we have yeah. had seven or eight new um, uh, contaminations um, locked away there. But um, I think Aboriginal people have taken this seriously. And I think once it's all over, I think they're going to be uh, wanting to get out there and hang out there. And, of course, we're all on standby as musicians. Yes, I'm, yes, thank you. And Buzz, what do you think? Well, I think, you know, within the communities themselves, I spoke to some guys up in uh, Millingimby the other day, you know, people can still play music there, you know, within the community. So that's sort of much the same. And, and, and as Mark said, you know, the, the, uh, a lot of 
remote communities were very lucky not to get any cases. I don't think there were any in Northern Territory either, which was a remarkable thing com- considering that, you know, that the rest of the Border Patrol tried their very hardest to get as many people uh, infected as possible to get around Australia through the Ruby Princess and stuff. You know, I, I think, I think you know, they, everyone dodged a bullet there. So as far as, like, the rest of us go... Um, I saw Michael Gadinsky on the TV this morning saying that there wouldn't be a, an international tour until maybe March next year, which is probably right because nobody will be able to afford to come and tour here if they can only have a third of a house, you know, but with social distancing and stuff. So, yeah. you know, yeah, the rest of us are going to have to wait. But um, I'm with you, Mark. I'm ready to go play as soon as we can. <laughs> yeah. And, and Buzz, you, you touched on a very important point. What it has done is everybody's jamming at home. Bands Correct. are jamming. Artists are mastering their, honing their art. And mm-hmm. uh, you see it on Facebook, you know. So, <clears throat> and then there's the um, Saltwater Festival type, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <clears throat> online performances. So uh, yes. people have taken advantage of the technology and um, that's been a good thing. And yeah. at the end of the day, people are just jamming at home. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the wonderful thing is that people can share that and and um, I think there's probably a bit of a, a factor where people have too much of it and, and there's only a certain amount of quality or certain quality that you can get to with sitting in front of a screen like that and, and, yeah. it, and it reduces everybody to a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty you know, uh, blatant kind of bottom line of everyone sitting in front of a computer screen with a guitar yeah. um you know you've got to be pretty damn good to cut through I reckon, absolutely i reckon and i think that the both of you do such great job out there in the community using music i think that like you said mark people are just raring to get out of their house so once you two get back out there again with your different programs um people might be a little bit more accommodating and, and be like, yes, I'm, I'm so into this because they've missed it for so long. Creating a bit of um, demand, I guess. So let's supply more demand, yeah. Yeah, yeah I well, think so. <clears throat> oh, God bless. No, I was just going to say, you know, the, the, for, for people like us that, that love performing in community and go into community to either work or just to get recharged, you know, because there's a certain part of that my work that I've done for 20 years now that there's part of me that needs that that background that I've got right there which you know like I say I'm sitting in Sydney but I've got Boaca and Arnhem Land behind me you know and and I need some of that I need to get out there and do it and I, I know there's a lot of people that that are, are starting to uh you know, I guess where people won't be able to go and tour overseas. So people will want to tour within Australia. There'll be a big boost in touring around Australia. Then if you get people touring around Australia, then they'll want people to to entertain them. Um, so, you know, it could, it could be okay, you know. I think yeah. so. And I think, Enough. and I just want to give a shout out to you, Mark. Do you want to hold up yeah. your boots? you want to hold up oh. your boots? Mark <clears throat> has just been given... Yes, the Dubbo <coughs> Dusty Boots Award. Congratulations. It's incredible accolade. So Dubbo, next year when Mark's on the road, watch out. He's going to be coming to, coming your way. That's incredible, Mark. I'd have to buy myself a pair of boots. You're going to have to buy yourself a pair of boots and the hat that goes <laughs> with it. That's um, it. Yep. Can you give us the background of the Dusty Boot? Yeah. Yes, why not? I have, I have a smoke machine that's got um, yellow, um, red dust, you know. <laughs> yeah, or light it up so so it looks like it's all dust. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The story about the dusty, <laughs> the story of the dusty boots. What does it mean? Does anyone know? Oh. <laughs> well, look, I I was surprised. I got a phone call from the organisers and said, "Look, you've been nominated, and on a whole list of of artists, um, and you've been nominated for your contribution to country music through your radio show, uh, through the Mary G Radio Show." And um, I've heard of Dubbo, of course, but I've never heard of the Dusty Boot Award. And so I was quite um, stoked to be, to be nominated. And um, But no, I didn't. I haven't heard about it, but it was named after um, a, p- a particular artist who was big in Tamworth. And this the, the Dubbo Country Music Festival is a spin-off, I guess, from Tamworth. Wow. No, congratulations. And those of you who are watching... Um 
I'll be putting all the links to Mary G show. Now, I believe you're going to be live streaming in the near, near, not so near future. Yes, we're working on that now. I've just got to keep an eye on the, the dollars. We'll, we'll have to invest in it all. But uh, I've got some good guys behind me who want, they want to make it happen. So uh, I said, look, if, you can, if the quality is good and, um, as Buzz says, um, and the um, opportunity is there, let's do it. So. Yeah. And everybody else, get this and download the Good Tucker app. I'll put all the details. Oh, you got it. Yeah, because I, I actually use it. I use Me it. too. I think it's great. So I think everyone should download this. <clears throat> and I think let's just stay conscious of um, the Indigenous communities. Um, you know, it's been challenging for them to be locked down, even though, yes, it's been a great break. Um, and we really look forward to when all the borders are open and every, you guys can get back on the road, get back to your programs and keep using music as a pathway to helping people with health and education. Well, one, yeah. one, other, one other good thing is I've been stuck in this home studio, so um, working on um, some other artists and, uh, and myself. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, um, it's disciplined me to stay in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Look, guys, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time. Oh, for Mark pleasure. And for Buzz and everyone, please check out both of their projects. It's well worth it. Anything that supports music in this day and age with all the changes that are facing our industry, it's very well worth it. So thank you once again, boys, and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care. No worries. Catch you later, thank Buzz. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.